most people are living in the lap of luxury, isn't it? I mean, after all, the career builder site just did a survey that said that 78% of all Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Isn't that really interesting? I'm looking for a particular individual, and I'm calling the company to say, look, I need to find this individual, and they basically tell me that she's been terminated. So how am I supposed to find her then? I make a phone call, I send a text message, I send an email, and for all I know, she's lost a lot, and it might be something that even in my homelessness I could do to help her, but that's not what people think. People think that a homeless person doesn't know anything. They think that an individual who has a mind is not the same as an individual who has a home, and I like to disagree. You see, in cybercrime, people get destroyed all the time. In identity theft, people take over their lives. In my situation, in the case, every time I lay something down, someone decides they're going to pick it up or filter it off, and literally they're destroying and vandalizing my property in a storage unit. I didn't give anyone the right to go in there, yet someone keeps doing that. I keep finding property on my person, getting taken off, or things in my bags that I literally set in a bag, like a set of rings, angel rings, actually rings that were with me, the last few days are now gone after I went to someone's house for lunch. I literally left my bags at the front door at the bidding of the Lord, and maybe it was to say, look, we've got to try and trust people sometimes, or maybe it was to put that person in their place. But you can't lie to someone about who you are and what you do. If you're a thief, you're literally a thief, I guess. But then there's liars of the land who just don't get the reality of America, that America's lives are changed by the thieves of people in our lives and the strangers that we try to reach out to for help. Everyone's like, well, why don't you just go here? Why don't you go there? And I'm like, I literally have gone here. I literally have gone there. And openly, there's always someone to say they don't have the ability to help. Isn't that interesting? In a church of 25 people who literally are paying for that little building, there's no one who can help a person to put a tent or a pup tent in a backyard. Isn't that unique? That there's no one in a small organization, a small congregation, that can offer up a can of food. Isn't that interesting? You see, we live in this land where people think that, why can't you buy a dollar's worth of food? Well, maybe I didn't produce a dollar's worth of sales. You see, in my mind, I'm looking at how do I get a career job, and in order to do that, I have to use, so utilize social media, I have to utilize a telephone, and I have to utilize video in some way to get people's attention. But maybe what I should be doing is monsterizing the world. I mean, maybe I should be just bitter and angry and all those sort of things, which I'm not. I literally am just tired. I'm absolutely tired of people's lies. The Liars of the Land is an upcoming film that I've written that literally should be playing in Christian film festivals. It really should be putting people in their place that they think they're representing the house of the Lord when they allow people to literally go hungry in the streets. Yet they will feed an animal in their house. Or, in the case of one of my siblings, she will feed a farmyard full of chickens, cats, dogs, sheep, lamb whatever, over her own siblings. But she'll spend a lot of time with her friends calling and interfering with my legal life. So isn't that interesting? If we decide we're going to destroy a life, we just go out and do it. We don't think about what it means to that individual. We don't think about how it impacts their life. We don't think about what it looks like to God in heaven, but we do it and we say it anyway. I literally gave an opportunity to someone to say, look, if you can just loan me this space, I'll do all these things for you which has a value of about this per month. But they couldn't see the evenness of the trade and that they were actually benefiting beyond what I could do for them and deliver for them is not the point, that they were going to benefit more than I would. But I was saying, look, at this moment in my life, this is what I'm looking for right now. Simply a place to be, a place to work, and literally, if they have no Wi-Fi, then it's totally a waste of my time. But at least it would give me a place to put my head down in a place that's probably not rat infested and probably not bug killed and probably not mosquito laden and people don't really think about that in Hamilton County because there's that crappy people who drive around and hit upon us when we fall asleep. You see, I fell asleep with my bags next to me, but someone decided to get into my baggage and take my rings out of my pocket. Who gave them the little right to do that? Who gave them the right to get into my bags at all is what I'd like to know and I know precisely where I fell asleep. I fell asleep inside a building so I wouldn't be cold for a little while outside of the great escape. I know there was people upstairs because I could hear them over the locked glass, which was basically an overhang, which I think are ridiculous things in buildings, because it creates a legal liability for anybody who's stupid enough to fall over or take it too much to drink or whatever, but that's not my point. But if those people passed by me fallen, having fallen asleep on my route, at least they didn't wake me. There are 
monsters in this land who I just get into REM sleep and they drive by and wake me up. They want to see my identification. What for? I didn't do one thing wrong, and it's a lie to say that no one has the right to fall asleep anywhere. There are people with narcolepsy who do fall asleep. And what are they going to do, rouse them up? What if they can't rouse them? You're going to mess around with somebody's life like this? You see, in life, we've got moments of time to prove who we are. In my life, when someone was really losing life, and I could tell, I could tell there was lies afoot. I could tell that there was a struggle. I could tell that she just needed to tell me what was going on so I could try to help. And when I finally got her to tell me what was going on, I did everything within my power, within my privilege, within my opportunities, within my networks, to attempt to help with the project that was important to her in life. But later in life, it's not the same in return. I look for one telephone call, I can't find it. I look for a response to a text message, I don't get it. I look for a response to an email, I don't receive it. I look for one single can of food, and openly, I normally have enough change to produce for myself 50 cents worth of food, but today wasn't that kind of a day. Today being Monday is a business day. We all get ourselves back to work, we get onto our projects, and we forget about the things that we promised the people. Now I literally have a, had a loving experience with some pastor putting up in a hotel room. But that could have been money towards some sort of service that I could have provided as opposed to just money in the wash can of a large conglomerate. You know, I had a lovely night's stay. I slept like a, a lamb, and I literally had a great breakfast and almost sort of a lunch from it. But the reality is that in life, we have to decide what moments of time are we going to take advantage of. Could it be possible that God guided me to that church because it's so bloody small that they need someone to help them with marketing? Or is it just that God thought they put me up for one night. You see, in life, the Lord knows everybody's plays, everybody's lies to themselves, everybody's ideas that I'm doing something for someone. Really? Are you really doing something for someone if you're harming their life and vandalizing their property and stealing their things and getting into their baggage and ruining their phone calls and interfering with their text messaging and dividing people who really care for each other? For all I know, the person's been responding back to me, but someone's getting onto my accounts and deleting them. You see, that's what little kids do in libraries and other places that have been taught how to hack things. We have high schools in the community that are teaching cyber hacking. And those folks go to Starbucks and other types of, of places, and they practice their skills. They don't think one thing about what it does to the person that they do it to. Now, I might be sounding like I'm not making a lot of sense, but I am literally tired. And I am literally tired of being lied to by pastors in particular, that they don't have anyone in their congregation, whether it's a congregation of 25 or a congregation of 2,500, that would allow a man a simple pup tent in the backyard of a house so that A, he's on private property, can sleep peacefully in a sleeping bag that he might have to borrow or somebody would have to help him get to a storage to pick up, or B, that he doesn't have to be swarmed by mosquitoes on a park bench somewhere or laying literally in the rain. You see, this is what we're talking about, about homeless in America, that most people are paycheck to paycheck, most people don't have retirement in the bank, and most people will live in poverty in their elderly years because they're not putting enough aside and because the human wage is not high enough to produce enough income for most people, forcing them to work late into their years longer than they should be. You see, when I talk about lateral compensation in companies, I'm trying to encourage politicians who are smart about life who haven't made their millions in some sort of intellectual property or some sort of intellectual opportunity or some sort of product opportunity to really say, you know what? You've got a huge house here. You've got a big farm. You've got a large backyard. I'm happy to have one person come and stay on the land. Look out for me. Look out for him. Look out for each other. You see, we have to change the landscape of America. We have to get the liars of the land out of here. We have to get people talking about honest to God truthfulness and that America is losing its ground because the average person doesn't make enough to live on. It's not just teachers that don't have a high enough salary. It's not just minimum age, wage workers. It's not just retail folks. It's literally everyone either lives beyond their means or literally doesn't make enough in their companies because lateral compensation is only going on in a handful of good, smart companies that pay the president down to the janitor all the same living wage so that everyone can have a home Everyone can have a car, and everyone can have food on the table, and possibly some money for kids going to college, or literally some money set aside for retirement. You see, if we want to be the land of luxury, then we have to be willing to help people when they need help. 
I'm a little bit tired. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to find a place to sleep. But some moron stole my sleeping pack. It kept me clean from the earth. It kept me warm with a wool blanket from the night. It allowed me to see at a distance with my binocular and a tool that would allow me to cut things if I needed it because someone pilfered my knife at a Walmart the other week. I used it to eat with, and then all of a sudden, boom, when I woke up from a quick nap, it was gone. It was in my pocket. Maybe I dropped it, but anybody who's an employee there should have picked it up and walked over and said, hey, I found this on the ground. Did you possibly lose it? You see, we have to be willing to do that in life, that people do leave things behind accidentally, and we have to be honest enough to say, you know, that item's not mine, but it might be this person's right here, so I'm going to check here first. Did you possibly misplace something? Did you possibly lose something? The other night, I was walking outside a dollar store where I bought my little dinner with the small amount of pocket change that I had. There was a cell phone and a pink cover on the ground. It was as if either someone laid it there or dropped it there. And I wonder, how could you possibly drop it in that position? But I picked it up, I took it in, I gave it to someone who had their glasses on and said, can you possibly call somebody's mom or friend or somebody to say, whose phone is this? Let them know where the phone is. Try and let someone in that family know where this phone is. These are expensive tools that we have. These are carrier plans that we protect for other people. We don't pick it up and start using it like it's our own. So when I'm talking about honesty, integrity, and love, and grace, and extension of those things, I'm really talking from a point of experience. Because when I didn't have everything in the world, I still wanted to care for someone. I still sent them gifts. I still sent them things to have hope. I still sent them things to make them laugh, hope to be silly a little bit with their children. But that was an act of love, not an act of anything else. I might not have had the most money in the world, but I hosted men's groups in my home when I was really struggling. Almost most of them brought nothing to eat, and I was really providing out of the last bits of my pocket for those people to eat. And they all had jobs. You see, we seem to be living in a land where people think that they don't have to be responsible for participating and caring for other people. And that's just plain wrong. In life, you've got moments of time to make major differences for people. We can either invest it in the land, we can invest it in animals, or we can invest it in human beings that really know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. Thanks for listening.